one of the things that really drives me crazy as the host of the Goldstein on Gelt show, and also as someone who writes articles in the Jerusalem Post and is a common blogger, is I try to discuss a lot of financial issues. And sometimes, even though I'm an investment advisor, I touch on tax issue. And all of a sudden, people call me up and they go, Doug, tell me about taxes. You know, at least you look like an accountant. And the fact is, I'm not an accountant. I only deal with investments, only investments in the United States. I don't give tax advice. But I all the time tell people that I'll talk to their accountants and I'd like to bring their accountants in for the discussions because obviously taxes are such a critical part of handling your portfolio. So today we will be talking with one of my favorite accountants in Israel. Today we'll be talking with Yosefa Uber, who I have known for many, many years. She's actually a repeat guest on the Goldstein on Gelt show. She handles American taxes for people living in Israel and and is, is able to answer a whole number of questions, but today we'll be talking about something very specific and, dare I say, very exciting for people who are looking to save on taxes. How are you doing, Yosefa? Thanks for having me. So the topic about saving money in taxes, one of the things people know is that if you give charity, you can, you can save money on your tax bill. So let's just start with that basic concept. Just tell me how that works. One way you can save money is if you itemize deductions, you can give to charities and you can get a deduction on your taxes for the charity. But I think what we're going to talk about today is specifically exciting for people who don't itemize, which is very relevant to people living in Israel. So let's just go back to some basic terms. When you say someone who files an American tax return and itemizes, what does that mean? Yes. And what, what does it mean to not itemize? Right. So somebody, when you file a tax return, you have the option of itemizing deductions, where it's, which is you give the IRS a lot of information about your, a lot of personal expenses, um, medical expenses in some cases, your charitable deductions, your state taxes, things like that. If you don't want to itemize or if it's not worthwhile to itemize, you can take the standard deduction, um, which is pretty generous, especially since 2018. And most people living in Israel, most people in general who don't live in, in states with state tax, it's usually not worth it to itemize. It usually makes more sense to take the standard deduction. Okay. So it, when that, what that means is that if someone earns a certain amount of money, let's say you earn fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, mm -hmm. rather than having to go through all the work of figuring out all the deductions, you just take the standard deduction and you say, okay, instead of a Instead of writing down that I earned $60,000 this year, how much can you deduct in the standard deduction? Uh, it depends on your filing status, but since 2018, it's been over $12,000 per person. So per it's person. as if instead of having earned $60,000, you can say, okay, I only earned $48,000. Right. Say. So I, I describe it as a chunk of money that every single U.S. citizen doesn't have to pay taxes on. You'd get to take it out of your taxable income before calculating taxes. You still have to tell the IRS about all the money you earned, but then you get to take out this big chunk. So a person in that situation, if he mm -hmm. donates money to charity, is he not able to use, Is he, does he not get to deduct that charity because he's using the standard deduction? So in most years, uh, especially since 2018, um, it's just not practical for most people with most amounts of charity to tell the IRS. Uh, during COVID, there was a specific, we, you were allowed to take uh, $300 or $600, um, but that's only for two very specific years. So in general, if you're not itemizing deductions and you're not giving really, really large amounts of money to charity, it's not worth it to tell the IRS in most cases. Okay, so now let's dive into the to the exciting point that I that I really wanted to cover today that that I think a lot of people don't know about, which is a, a lot of times when people have an IRA account, an individual retirement account, mm -hmm. the the money grows for them tax deferred for many, 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 many years. And then at a certain point in their life, they have to, they're required to take out certain sums of money, which we call a required minimum distribution. And there mm -hmm. are some charitable opportunities here. And I'm guessing even for people who are taking the standard deduction. So I put a lot into that sentence, that question. So <laughs> before we get to the punchline of the question, yeah. let's just go over some of the basics. Can you describe what an IRA is and, and how yeah, that works yeah. for people? So a traditional IRA, you put the money in without paying. It, it's usually a deduction from your taxes. It goes in tax-free, as in it's one more chunk of money that you don't pay taxes on in the year that you put it into the IRA. And you, take, you pay tax when it comes out. So it grows tax-free for 
generally all the years that you're working. Um, it's growing tax-free. And then when you go to take it out, you pay tax on the amount then. Okay. Uh, a Roth IRA is different. Sorry, just to touch on that, but from yeah. an investment standpoint, the mm-hmm. benefit of not paying taxes every year can be huge because yes. if your portfolio grows and where you buy and sell or you get dividends and interest, all that money, 100% of that money can be reinvested in the investment that you have or whatever investment you want. And then you really benefit from compound interest. But the party does end at a certain point when you have to start taking, <laughs> taking the money out. So that's right. when does that's that happen? Right. Uh, so you have to start taking the money out at 73 age 73, uh, you can start taking it out at 59 and a half, right? No, so a lot of people are able to, but we always encourage them to keep the money in as long as possible. If they have other sources of income, if they don't, then they need the money. But if they have other sources of income, so then we always say, no, um, leave the money in there as long as possible to, to benefit from having the money grow on a tax deferred basis. But like you were saying, at age 73, all of a sudden the IRS comes knocking on your you door. You have to start taking it out. Right, because they say, you know, we deserve, you you didn't pay tax on the money when you put it in. It's been growing for you for decades. You didn't pay any tax. Come on, give us, give us a little tax. 73 is that age. So how does that work? Oh, well, I also want to mention it could be relevant for people younger if they inherit an IRA. They might also have to be taking money out earlier. So this could also be relevant to them. Um, But I I think uh, you're, you, there's a conquerable. There's a calculation of uh, what your retire your required minimum distribution is uh, based on your age and a number of factors, and I think your broker can usually help you uh, make that calculation and determine how much you need to be taking out each year. Right, we always laugh about that. We say that uh, this calculation is based on an IRA and an IRS table. Of, right, right. Of when you're going to die, and they seem to know when everyone's going to die, and what they do is they calculate. Okay. Someone who's 73 is expected to die at age 90 or whatever it is. Uh-huh. And they take the value of the portfolio. They divide it up over that many years and say, okay, now take out this sum of money. It's usually not a huge amount of money, but uh, all of a sudden people take the money out and they have to pay tax when they withdraw the money. Right. So right. any secrets you want to share with us about how to not have to pay the tax on that money and a special way to So a big secret that we're here to talk about today is qualified charitable distributions, which is a way that you can get money out of the IRA tax-free. You typically, if you have a traditional IRA, you've put the money in tax-free, you have to pay tax when it comes out. This is a perfectly legal secret where you can take the money out tax-free as well, uh, but you cannot put it directly in your pocket. You have to give it to a qualifying charity. So a qualifying charity, we're talking about American charities normally, which yes. have the long designation of 501c3, yes. 501c3, which is the, the, the paragraph in the IRS code that defines something as a charity. So right. you're saying you have to give directly to the charity. What does is, what is directly really mean? Yeah. So that's very important. You have to work with your trustee, for example, usually the brokerage, and you have to make sure that that money goes directly from your IRA to the charity. It cannot go into your account first. It can't be a check that they write to you and then you give that check to the charity. Um, It can't go to you in between. And it also cannot go into a donor advised fund in between. It has to go directly from your IRA all the way to the 501c3 charity. So one of the ways that we've found to make it easier for our clients who have IRAs is that we actually literally give them a checkbook mm-hmm. that that they can that draws off the IRA account. So it might say, uh, the, the name on the account might be the Yosefa Huber IRA, and we give you a mm-hmm. checkbook that says Yosefa Huber IRA, and you write a check. But you have to write the check out to the charity in order to make sure that it goes directly and doesn't, you know, don't pass... Go, don't collect $200 on that. When I'm of retirement age. When you are of retirement age. So so we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. But tell me, what are the benefits? Why would someone do this? Yeah, so you can can give charity of up to $100,000 per spouse from the IRA into the charity, and you get a deduction directly from the 
the ta- what would otherwise be a taxable distribution. Um, so number one, you're giving to charity, which is always a nice benefit. Uh, number two, you're getting money out tax-free and it counts as your required minimum distribution. So you don't have to take any other distributions and pay tax on any other distributions. Um, and, and it's, you know, this is income that otherwise you would have to pay tax on and you, you send it to charity instead of sending money to charity directly from your bank account or your, you know, other investments, as long as you take it directly from your IRA, it is tax free. It still gets reported on your tax return, but that portion is tax free. So let's put some numbers. This is giving yeah. an example. So let's say yeah. that someone decides to donate um, twenty thousand dollars. So normally, the way that we do a distribution for a client from his IRA is if he's taking out twenty thousand dollars. So we'll do the withholding. Our U.S. brokerage firm will withhold, let's say, ten percent. We'll send two thousand dollars to the IRS. Eighteen thousand dollars goes to the client. So instead, if he wanted to give that money to the IRS, what would it look like? Uh, to, not to the IRS. If he wanted to <laughs> not give money to the IRS, but yes. rather give it to charity, what, yes. what would it look like in that case? Um, so what I would see as the accountant uh, is that the the client should be receiving a form 1099R, which is what they receive anytime they get a distribution, charitable or or directly to them. And then hopefully uh, it should show, uh, it, it's not always super clear, but hopefully it should show um, that the taxable amount is lower. Uh, because the amount that they sent directly to the charity should be not included in the tax amount. Hopefully the client also tells me so I know to look for it and I can make sure it's been done correctly. And they also need to keep receipts. So if you give charity through this, if you do give a qualified charitable distribution, the IRS says you're still required to keep the receipt. Um, so I would, you know, make sure that that's all lined up. It's still, I still report it on their tax return. I just don't report the amount of the qualified distribution uh, as the taxable amount. I see. So if the client has to do this required minimum distribution, Mm -hmm. right? The term required is so important here, but instead of taking the money for himself, he gives it to charity. Yeah you then as the accountant have to somehow let the IRS know that the reason the client didn't take the money out and do the requirement distribution himself is because he gave that money to a charity. Right. So so usually it's printed right next to the line of the IRA distributions. It would be printed QCD, which should let the IRS know that that's the reason that there was a difference between the total distribution and the charitable distribution. Um, You know, that said, the IRS could still send them a letter. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong or your accountant did anything wrong. Just means, you know, the IRS, is, they question a lot of things and <laughs> and uh, you or your accountant can hopefully take care of that pretty easily. Got it. So in the example I gave before of someone who was going to be taking $20,000 out of his IRA, and in my example, normally the brokerage mm-hmm. firm would withhold, let's say, 10% or $2,000. Yes. How much money would go to the charity in the QCD model? So if they were giving their entire RMD to charity, uh, so I believe all $20,000 would go to the charity. Um, But I I think it could depend on the brokerage. Uh, I mean, it it wouldn't shock me if they still accidentally withheld money, (laughs) you know. I see a lot of things. When when our clients do this, we give them a... We get we will give them the checkbook to to write the checks mm-hmm. and then write the checks that are on their own. We always tell them, however, they need to be very careful to make sure that they take out their full RMD because normally we take responsibility where we make sure that the clients do their mm-hmm. their again. I keep stressing the R, the required minimum distribution because yes. you have to take out this money. You have to. Do There's a penalty if you penalty. don't. Yes. Right, and and uh, this can be a painful penalty, right? It can, and it can be annual. If you you know if you find out you forgot to take, or if the IRS notices you forgot to take your required distribution several years ago, they can they can tax you on an annual basis until you get the correct amount out and, and pay tax on it. Right. So we, we normally, in most cases, we just make sure the clients do that. We handle that for them. But as soon as the client right. says, "No, Doug, I'd like a checkbook off my IRA because I want to do QCDs," we're using a lot mm-hmm. of. Uh, a lot of uh, mm-hmm. abbreviations here. I want to do these charitable distributions from my IRA. So then he's responsible. So if you're going to do this, absolutely make sure that you're on top of it to make sure you do the, 
the total amount. Tell me, are there any other eligibility requirements, mm -hmm. limits that we should know about? Well, I, th I think it's worth mentioning um, for people who are still putting into their IRA, if they live in Israel, it's really important to be talking to your accountant and make sure that you're actually eligible to contribute. I had a, a surprising spike during 2022 of people who um, were inspired to contribute to IRAs without uh, speaking to me first, um, which I, I'm a little hurt by because I really <laughs> try to be available for any, you know, any of these questions. I like to be available. Um, and so some of them did have uh, some of them did have to pay penalties because they simply weren't eligible. So putting into the IRA, it's also important to make sure that you're eligible to put in um, and then taking out. It's it's a good idea to be in touch with your accountant to, you know, the, they'll be keeping up with the annual requirements and annual, you know, let's say I'm saying right now one hundred thousand dollars. But if you maybe when you're listening to this or when you're thinking about it or when it's finally relevant to you, it could be different. So it's really worth keeping up with your, you know, keeping, keeping in touch with your accountant about your plans for these things. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many, you know, as you're talking and you're mentioning different mm -hmm. things about IRA accounts, I'm thinking so many other topics are relevant. This is just one that we're touching on today, which is qualified charitable distributions and, and mm -hmm. great secret, as we said, but it, I'll tell you, it is a little bit of a secret because I don't think a lot of people know about it. And one of the reasons that people don't know about it is because they don't connect their investment advisor with their accountant. It really, really helps when it doesn't have to be all the time, doesn't even have to be every year. But at some point, if you say to your accountant, hey, could you just get on the phone with my financial guy or my financial guy, get on the phone with my account, yeah. just talk about me. I just want someone to get together, you know, I want people to put their heads together and think about me, it helps us a lot because I've had, I've certainly had times when clients tell me something, they go, they say, oh, my accountant was telling me such and such. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me? They go, oh, well, I figured you'd know too. I said, no, this is a tax issue. Yeah. Back to my opening yeah. statement, I deal with the investment. So, you know, Yusef and I speak a lot about, we speak about do, clients. Yeah. And, and you really need to, uh, to bring your professionals together. Yeah, I, can, I try to keep pretty good track of of uh, my clients who are using different professionals so that I know who might need to be roped into the conversation. I try to have in advance uh, agreements. So, for example, all the clients that you and I have in common, we have I have an agreement on file where they've already in advance said that we can talk to each other uh, right. because, That's you know, in yeah. both of our businesses, <laughs> uh, we have to be very careful about um, keeping keeping our client status secure. And uh, so, yeah, we, I, I do try to make sure that my clients know that we can talk to each other and um, that these, these are relevant conversations that we can be having together. And can really save you a, a lot of money in terms of taxes. Yes. All right. Yosef, I see we're just about out of time, but uh, for people who want to get a little more help with their taxes, could you just tell them one minute what you do and how people can contact you? Yeah. So I'm a US CPA. I work mostly with Americans living in Israel. And I can be contacted on my website, Yosef, uh, excuse me, my website is Huber, H-U-B as in boy, E-R, tax, T-A-X, C-P-A dot com. Fantastic. Yosef, thanks again for, for coming out to the Goldstein on Gelt Show. I thanks hope so much. to see you again soon. Thank you for having me. Bye now.